Welcome to our lecture online. When we started this series, we said that the minimum mass required for this type of process where we end up with a type 2 supernova is a star with at least eight times the mass of the sun. We might have wondered, is there actually an upper limit to this? And actually there is. When the star, the supermassive star, has a mass of about 40 to 50 times the mass of the sun. Now those are very, very rare stars. There aren't many of those types. And of course, this is all theoretical, but based upon our calculations, we will realize that, yes, the few stars that are that big will probably not go through the process that we just described. Initially, yes, but when the core is collapsing and then the, the electron degeneracy pressure no longer prevents it from coming together and all the protons and electrons are squeezed into neutrons and the neutrinos are made and the neutrinos scream out of the star, taking away a lot of the energy from that implosion. When that collapsing core of the star has a certain minimum mass, the neutron degeneracy pressure will not withstand that collapse. Essentially, the neutron pressure will be insufficient to cause the, to keep the quarks from collapsing in on themselves. In other words, if we have that nuclear ball filled with neutrons, 20 kilometers across, 12 miles across, across where one single two teaspoonful has a mass of 100 million tons, the pressure and the force at the very center are so enormous that the quarks cannot withstand that enormous pressure and they will implode in on themselves. Once they do that, the core will continue to collapse and turn itself into a black hole. Now, the mass of the core has to be at least two and a half times the mass of the sun to work, according to our calculations for this to happen. And so it's a very rare event, but we know it does happen. So what happens? Well, once the, once the quarks can no longer withstand that pressure and they begin to crumble in on each other and the whole thing begins to collapse in itself, there's no stopping gravity at that point. Gravity at this point will simply become king. And the size of that core will continue to shrink in size and shrink in size and shrink in size until it's 15 kilometers across and then it's 10 kilometers across and 5 kilometers across and 1 kilometer across and then it's 100 meters across and all this time the density just increases to enormous quantities and eventually it's only 10 meters across, 1 meter across, 1 centimeter across and the whole core of the star gets pushed into an infinitesimally small volume. The mass is still there, the gravitational effect is still there, you just don't have the volume anymore. And so then the density will be so enormous, it simply will become a black hole. A region in space where gravity is so large that anything comes near it simply gets pulled in, even light when it ventures too close. And so that's what happens to those few stars that have their upper limit, that are beyond the 40 to 50 times the mass of the sun, where the core cannot withstand the enormous pressure and forces and the neutron degeneracy pressure cannot withstand and cannot prevent the core from collapsing further beyond the, the ball of neutrons, eventually we'll call it a neutron star. It will go beyond that and collapse into a black hole. But that's only for those very rare few that are beyond that size limit. And there aren't many, but enough to make sure that there's some black holes here and there lurking in our galaxy. And that is how it works. Just stay away from them. <laughs> I think we're safe. <laughs> All right, we got one more. <laughs> 